I'm uh, deeply grateful and honored to be here today and address you on the topic of Jewish migration. I thank Professor Ada Cohen for her kind invitation and for thinking of me as a speaker at this prestigious academic institution, University of Dushisha. CISMO is a wonderful intellectual environment for the exchange of knowledge and ideas among scholars from dis different disciplines who are interested in religion. Jews, perhaps more than other, any other people, are known for the special mobility and dispersion. In their earliest appearance, God commanded Abraham to leave his land, birthplace, and father's home. Since then, Jewish history has known centuries of exile, return, and dispersion, as well as the most dramatic migration of modern times. Thus, geography, in the wisest meaning of the term, has been pivotal in understanding the Jewish history and social and cultural structure. As the American sociologist Louis Wirth phrased in his 1928 book, and I quote, if you would know what kind of Jew a man is, ask him where he lives, for no simple factor indicates as much about the character of the Jew as the area in which he lives. It is an index not only to his economic status, his occupation, his religion, but to his politics and his outlook on life and the stage in the assimilative process that he has reached." End of quote. One's place of residence is the end result of a decision either to move, that is to migrate, or not to. Thus, Jewish geography is mainly a story of migration. Because migration is so important in the Jewish context, each of the six parts of my lecture will describe a different but complementary aspect of the topic. Part one will discuss trends in the size and spatial dispersion of the Jewish population from the 19th century to the present. This is accompanied by part two, which reviews the volume and direction of Jewish international migration during the period. Part three focuses on the major migration stream in the past few decades to Israel, including insights about the intersection of people who reached Israel from societies that were in very different stages of modernization. Part four looks at that Jews who went the other way, choosing to emigrate from Israel, bringing to the four issues of transnationalism and the maintenance of homeland relations. Part five looks briefly at the Jewish migration to Eastern and Southern Asia, focusing on the Jewish community of Japan. Part six concludes by raising a few thoughts about the future of Jewish international migration and the challenges for policy. At the beginning of the 18th century, there were an estimated one million Jews in the world. This number had been constant for several centuries, reflecting the Jews' inability to increase demographically due to massacres, persecutions, and general ecological conditions. Several of these factors lost some of their potency during the 18th century, especially in Europe, as longer life expectancy and the continuation of a very high fertility rates both brought the so-called demographic transition. Accordingly, the world Jewish population more than doubled by the end of that century to nearly a half million. By the end of the 19th century, this population increased fourfold to 10 million. The first decades of the 20th century were marked by ever-growing urbanization, secularization, and persuade of higher education, all of which having a dip of dampening effect on the number of children per woman, and in turn of family size. Even so, the number of Jews continued to rise, reaching an all-time peak of 16 and a half million at the outbreak of World War II. Then came the Holocaust. The murder of six million Jews slashed the Jewish population by one third within only six years. Jewish history has often been accompanied by pogroms and alienation, but never had the size of the Jewish people been affected so powerfully, so quickly. The effects, however, went beyond mere numbers. They also restructured the Jewish people because a large proportion of Jews murdered in the Holocaust, one fourth were children. Thus, the Holocaust undermined the demographic base that is responsible for intergenerational replacement. Overall, world Jewry has not recovered from the demographic terribleness of the Holocaust. Since the end of World War II, the Jewish population has grown quickly in the years immediately following the war and in the 1950s and 1960s, more slowly since then. But it never returned to its pre-World War II size. Today, it numbers slightly more than 14 million people. 
Amid these changes in the size of the world Jewish population, the Jews' geographic dispersion has changed significantly. Many of these changes were determined by international migration. Another important factor is the Jews' changing spatial equilibrium. However, its variation in internal demographic characteristics, such as births, deaths, and religious switching. To demonstrate this, let us divide the world into five major areas of Jewish presence. In the late 19th century, some nine out of every 10 Jews resided in Europe, the overwhelming majority in the eastern part of the continent. Another 8% lived in North Africa and Asia, especially in Yemen, Iraq, and Iran, and only 3% dwelled in the United States. And Turkish ruled Palestine was home to only one third of 1% of a world Jewry, or 25,000 out of some 7.7 million. Over the next 60 years, especially due to a large scale of migration from Eastern Europe, mainly to the United States, but also to other destinations, such as Argentina, South Africa, Canada, and Palestine, Europe's share in the geographic dispersion of the Jews fell to slightly more than half, while that of the United States increased significantly to nearly 30%. Notably, Jewish migration to the United States was part of a large influx of immigrants from Europe tens of millions who were drawn to the extraordinary economic prosperity that the United States was experiencing then. However, while many non-Jewish immigrants considered this a temporary move and returned to their home countries after making money, most of the Jewish immigrants made the United States their permanent home. In the 10 years that followed, the changes in the distribution of Jews should be attributed to the Holocaust, which by mainly affecting Jews in Europe, reduced the weight of this continent to one-third of world Jewry and increase the proportions of other areas accordingly. The major change since 1948, when the State of Israel was founded, are the rise in the proportion of Jews in Israel to 43% of world Jewry, the ongoing decline in the proportion of Jews in Europe, and the emptying of the, so of the Jewish communities in Northern Africa and Asia. In other words, the past 130 years have witnessed the shrinkage of the green part of the diagram which represents Europe and considered the bulk of world Jewry and the diminution of the purple part, that of Northern Africa and Asia, in favor of the United States and Israel. Today's Jewish special patterns reflect a unique combination of concentration and dispersion. The largest single Jewish community today is in Israel. The second largest, only a little smaller, is in the United States. Together, they count for roughly 80% of world Jewry. Adding the next eight countries that have the largest Jewish populations, we find that 95% of world Jewry lives in only 10 countries. Apart from Israel and the United States, there are affluent and stable Western democracies, such as France, Canada, the UK, Australia, and Germany. The last mentioned has absorbed significant numbers of Jewish immigrants from the former Soviet Union. The remaining 4% of Jews in the world, as these are distributed across some 75 countries, each with a silent Jewish population of more than 100. To understand Jewish migration in its resulting geographic distribution in the best possible way, one should study the intensive and complex relations that the Jewish communities maintain with society at large. To do this, demographers link the presence of Jews to key social and economic indicators of the countries of residence. The question we ask is, do Jews move about and redistribute themselves randomly, or do instrumental forces in society at large influence their geographic preferences? At the beginning of this century, more than half of all Jews in the world were in the highest ranked deciles of countries, the red slice, according to such objective indicators of life expectancy, literacy rate, and gross national product. A little over one third, the blue slice, were in the second highest deciles. If so, nearly 90% of Jews live today in the top two socioeconomic deciles of countries against 0% in the bottom deciles. The total world population is distributed much differently. Only 16% of people live in the most developed countries, while more than half belong to the five lowest ranked deciles of countries. If so, there is a clear link between the presence of Jews in a given place and the availability of specific basic socioeconomic and cultural conditions. The main reason for this 
has to do with the three characteristics of today's Jews, urban, highly educated, and heavily specializing in white color professions. Thus, Jews congregate in the world's most economically developed and politically stable areas. This is a radical departure from the norm in the most of Jewish history when Jews were tolerated or discriminated against and often hoped for social changes that would benefit them politically and socially. Under today's relatively stable and attractive conditions, Jews' interests increasingly coincide with those of the social order. Hence, at the end of a long transformation that delivered political emancipation and economic achievement, Jews find themselves in a more conservative mindset about their position in society at large. When I speak of changes in the Jews' spatial dispersion, I mean more than different areas that are defined by clear national or continental boundaries. The discourse of contemporary international migration, which it constantly uses terms such as transnationalism, diaspora, and homeland, makes an important distinction between Jews who live in Israel and those who dwell elsewhere. This binary distinction is very important in the case of the Jews. This is because the Jewish national idea, namely Zionism, which is intrinsic to the raison d'etre of the State of Israel in its proclamation of independence, states that Israel is the home of the Jewish people. In Zionism, Israel is the place where not only the Jews' physical existence, but also the religious and cultural vitality is ensured. Over time, the distribution of the Jewish population between Israel and the diaspora has evolved in a direction that has strengthened Israel's share from 6% in 1948 to 42% in 2014. Just the same, most Jews still live outside the Jewish sovereign state. Changes in the Jewish geographic distribution are largely the outcomes of the high levels of international migration. Notably, migration always involves a place of origin, a place of destination, and intervening obstacles between them. At origin, there are factors that have a retaining effect on people, marked by the plus signs, others that push them out, marked by the minus signs, and yet other factors marked as a zero, toward which people are indifferent, namely they do not take these factors into consideration in deciding to stay or leave. Similarly, at the destination, there are positive factors that pull people to the area, negative factors that repel people from coming to and settling in the area, and others marked with zero that do not affect migration decisions. Migration, especially international ones, should also consider obstacles that always exist, including distance, migration laws, and transportation limitations. Through the period under discussion, Jews have been eager to leave the place of residence. Sometimes, however, they had no better alternative than to stay put. By this, I mean that the balance between push and negative factors at origin was not accompanied by meaningful pull factors in other countries. Likewise, Jews have not always had the freedom to switch countries. A major change in Jews' opportunities of having a country whose gates are open occurred in 1948 with the establishment of the State of Israel. Israel's law of return entitles every Jew to immigrate to and settle in the country. It also allows non-Jewish first-order kin, spouses, children and their spouses, and grandchildren and their spouses to do so. Between 1880 and 2014, some 9 million Jews made an international move that involved the crossing of continents. Among a population that peaked at 16.5 million but was much smaller during most of the period, this number of migrants is widely exceptional. There is probably no other people that expands such high rates of migration. Modern Jewish international migration has followed the pattern of cyclical waves stimulated by political and economic crises that befell Jewish communities at areas of origin. The pattern includes three major waves and several minor ones. The first of the three moments of mass migration was the outflux of Jews from the Russian and Hamburg empires to the West, especially to the United States. It corresponded with the period of nearly unrestricted mass migration that preceded World War I and peaked in 1905-1906. The next major wave followed the establishment of the State of Israel, which opened its gates to unrestricted Jewish immigration. 
It featured mass migration in the late 1940s and early 1950s, peaking in 1948 to 1951. The third was the great exodus from the former Soviet Union that began in the autumn of 1989 and peaked in 1990 to 1991 as the Soviet Union crumbled. Importantly, the third wave was as large in absolute terms as the two preceding ones, but left a smaller impact on a much more organized and wealthier society. Notice the continuous ups and downs at similar intervals of 40 to 45 years. This does not appear to have happened by chance. It may well be the product of an intric intricate set of factors that we may detect. Indeed, several leading scholars have transcended simplistic fascination with historical cycles and have long suggested that global economics and politics unfold in cycles. Periodic conflicts among major powers and sharp interruptions of economic development tend to upset the world's geopolitical balance and redistribute global spheres of influence. The consequences of these global changes eventually percolate down to regions, countries, provinces, communities, and people, especially when the Jews served as mediators in rigidly stratified multi-ethnic countries. The social position was severely dislodged when long-established mechanisms of interaction between them and other social, political, and ethno-religious groups were disrupted. The periodically recurring need to leave the country hastily gives clear evidence of the Jewish community's sensitivity to, if not dependency on, a threat of international historical events that is much broader and complex than the Jews alone. In the continual migration flows that took place between the shocking drive outflux, the Jews' choices of countries of or, or areas of settlement and resettlement were consistently rational. They preferred places that were economically more developed and politically more secure than others. To make this point, I wish to simplify the world into four major blocks. With the highly fragmented world of Jewish geographical dispersion taken into account, Jewish international migration has two major areas of origin, Eastern Europe and various Asian and African countries. It also has one dominant type of destination, Western societies, chiefly the United States, but also Western Europe, Canada, and Australia, and Israel. In the period between 1880 and 2014, roughly half of the 9 million Jewish international migrants moved from Eastern Europe to Western countries. Another one-third from Eastern Europe in Asia and Africa to Israel, the arrows on the right and the bottom, and the remaining one-fifth between Western countries and Israel. In this process, Jewish communities in Muslim countries virtually disappeared. Now I divide the period into sub-periods. From 1880 to the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948 and the years thereafter, each direction of Jewish migration accounted for much different proportion in the first sub-period than in the second. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the overwhelming majority of Jewish migrants moved from Eastern Europe to Western societies, especially to the United States. Only 10% of them headed for Palestine at this time, although larger share did so between the two world wars as Western countries cracked down on entrance. Migration waves in other directions were weak overall. From 1984 to the present, total Jewish migration basically matched that of previous sub-period but became more diverse, with large numbers moving in different and sometimes contrasting directions. After gaining its dependence in 1948, Israel became the major bef beneficiary of immigrants, absorbing more than 60% of the 5 million Jews who became international migrants from Eastern Europe, Asia, and Northern Africa, and Western countries. As this happened, the proportion of Jewish migrants who settled in Western countries fell to slightly more than one-third, the arrows originating in Eastern Europe and Asia Africa jointly. In another important development, about one quarter of Jewish international migration involved the Jews who moved from Israel to Western countries and vice versa with a similar percentage in each direction. The next diagram shows the changing role of Israel as a destination for Jewish migration. During the entire period from 1880 to 2014, Jews preferred to move from one diaspora country to another. 
by sub-periods, however, the picture is much different. Up to 1948, most of Jewish migrants originated in the diaspora and resettled there. From then on, most of them moved to Israel. The combination of a large diasporic Jewish population and its successful integration into the host society, including strong interaction with the non-Jews at universities, workplaces, and residential neighborhoods, enhances social contacts that eventually lead to high rates of interfaith marriage. When we add to this the growing pluralism and fluidity that typify religion and ethnicity in many Western countries, the definition of group belonging becomes complex and often confusing. Hence, when we set the current Jewish population at 14 million, we refer to two kinds of people, those in Israel who are defined as the Jews by the Israeli religious establishment, and those living elsewhere who define themselves as Jews. Together, this is the core Jewish population, namely the inner green circle. However, there is another group, people who have a Jewish background, many of whom have one Jewish parent, but who now identify with another religion. This group, plus the core, is the extended to Jewish population, which is estimated at 17 million, the white circle. Further, the enlarged Jewish population takes into account also non-Jews with no Jewish background who reside in households with at least one person who is a Jewish. Often, these are the spouses or children of mixed marriages. The enlarged Jewish population the orange circle is comprised of 20 million people. From the homeland point of view, Israel's law of return guarantees the right to immigrate and receive citizenship to every Jew as well as to his or her non-Jewish spouses, their non-Jewish children and their spouses, and the non-Jewish grandchildren of a Jew and their spouses. This broad definition increases the population of those who have a current or past attachment to Judaism and for this reason have the right to immigrate to Israel, or to stay there if already there, to 23 million, the outmost wet circle. Thus, for every core Jew, there are almost three, two, who meet the criteria of the law of return. The leading role of Israel as a destination for present-day Jewish migration deserves special attention. Immigration to Israel, known in Hebrew as Aliyah, meaning ascent to Zion, tends to be explained primarily on, ideologi on ideological grounds. The two dominant factors in this large-scale transfer of population and settlement in Israel's is Israel's centrality in logistic support from international organizations in the immigration of Jews to Israel. However, a detailed observation on the intensity of immigration to Israel in general, particularly country by country, confirms that immigration to Israel depends on the existence of a various negative or push factors in the countries of origin. Hence, when we view Israel's role in Jewish international migration within the broad framework of migration theory, we find that this role is not consistent. The inconsistency grows even more when we notice that Israel has recently joined the group of the 25 most developed countries that attract immigrants regardless of ideological incentives at least for immigrants from less developed and politi politically instable countries. Some three million Jews have immigrated to Israel since 1948. Like Jewish migration more generally, this movement has had its up and downs. Two ups stand out. One came right after independence. It comprised about 700,000 people, especially Holocaust survivors and Jews from North African and Asian communities that expands declines in personal safety at that time. The second took place in the early 1990s as Eastern Europe underwent geopolitical changes and the USSR embarked on perestroika and allowed the Jews to emigrate. This wave brought a million Jews to Israel in the last decade of the 20th century. Although the two large waves were quite similar in numerical size, the early immigration was much more meaningful in relative terms. It doubled Israel's Jewish population from 650,000 at the time of independence to 1.3 million at the end of the mass immigration in 1952. The large wave of the 1990s from the former Soviet Union added 20% to the Jewish population that preceded it. 
While immigration to Israel originated mainly in East Europe and Muslim countries in Northern Africa and Asia, Jews arrived in Israel from dozens of countries in those and other regions contributing to the social and cultural diversity of its population. Thus, the general pattern of immigration to Israel hides several particularistic profiles that can be attached to a given country or cluster of countries of origin. Each one has a unique combination of push factors, pull factors, and intervening obstacles. Four leading models are worth noting. The first, demonstrated here by the case of Iraq, is also characteristic of Yemen, Bulgaria, and several others, mostly in the Near East and the Balkan region. In this model, the Jewish community was transferred to Israel almost in its entirety soon after Israel was established. A second profile is typified by the Soviet Union and most other East European countries. Extreme fluctuations between virtually zero and very sizable migration reflecting the shifting immigration, namely out-migration policies of these countries of origin. The third profile uses Argentina as its model, but is also characteristics of most Latin American countries, as well as South Africa. Rather substantial migration with continuous and sharp fluctuations in response in response to local economic and political crisis. The fourth model is characteristic of the United States, Canada, and most West European countries. Generally, scarce migration, except for spikes after events in Israel that strengthen ideological and religious motivations, such as the Six-Day War and the reunification of Jerusalem. Studying the intensity of immigration to Israel, country by country, we find that this immigration depends on the varying existence of negative or push factors in the origin countries. The frequencies of immigration to Israel between 1,000 Jews correlate negatively with the origin countries index of human development as expressed in the ranking of each country. In other words, the higher a country is ranked, with one being the highest and 180 the lowest, in indicators such as health, education, and national income, the less inclined the Jews are to immigrate to Israel and vice versa. Today, with the diaspora Jews congregating in the highly developed countries, it stands to reason that future migration to Israel will not be very intensive unless current conditions change. A major characteristic of migration to Israel is its diversity. Again, immigrants to Israel arrive from many different countries. Often, and for the sake of simplicity, we create a dichotomy between the Jewish immigrants from Europe and America also called Ashkenazim, and those from Asia and Northern Africa, the so-called Sephardim. Since 1948, the ratio between Ashkenazim and Sephardim has been roughly two-thirds and one-third. This composition, however, changes from one sub-period to another. More importantly, immigrants from these two geographic agglomerates reach Israel with very different socioeconomic and cultural characteristics. Thus, a major question arises as to the absorption and gathering of the two groups and the extent to which they melt into one another or evolve along different trajectories. A major test for intergroup integration is the tendency to intermarriage. Our data clearly show that this tendency among Ashkenazi and Sephardi Jews has, shown growing, has been growing over time. Before 1948, only 5% of those who married had a spouse from a different ethnic group. The rate had increased to 13% by the late 1950s to about one-fourth of newly married couples in the late 20th century. Such close familial ties obviously enhance cultural meaning, mingling. Another important social demographic indicator <coughs> is family size and number of children. At the time of arrival, immigrants to Israel from Asia and Northern Africa at fertility level that was typical for developing countries, five or six children per woman, as against only three among women of European or American extraction. As time passed, however, the Asian African group converged to the patterns of, development of developed societies masking the previous ethnic differences. A complementary dimension of intergroup similarities and dissimilarities is education. The initial disadvantage of immigrants from Asia and Africa relative to counterparts from Europe and America, the two lines at the top, narrowed substantially among the second generation, the two lines at the bottom, although a little more slowly. Another way to view the differences between the two ethnic groups is through the index of dissimilarity. 
The index tells us that among the first generation, some 40% of those from Asian and African origin had to change their level of education to resemble that of immigrants from Europe and America. This was true for only 26% of the second generation offspring who had been born in Israel. While many Jews moved to Israel, others, many fewer, choose to live and resettle elsewhere. Immigration from Israel, Yerida or descendant, is part of a global phenomenon of a voluntary migration that has expanded steadily in the past two decades. The rate of immigration from Israel, meaning the number of immigrants relative to the size of the population, is not exceptional by Western standards and uh, despite temporary fluctuations, has been declining over time. You're already familiar with this figure on the relation between immigration to Israel and level of devel development of countries of origin. But this figure also correlates the rate of immigration from Israel with the country's ranking in the development index, the blue diamond. Israel ranking suggests that, this, that its volume of immigration is pretty much in accordance with that of other countries that rank similarly on the development index, that is to say, strong development and rather low immigration rates. We'll now skip two paragraphs. In the special distribution, Israel is a border almost equally divided between the United States and the rest of the world. Most of the latter settle in Western and Central Europe, the United Kingdom and France being the dominant destinations. Approximately three-fourths of Israeli immigrants were born in Israel. Another one-fourth are Jews who were born elsewhere, immigrated to Israel and left the country after a few years. Some 60% of the latter group are return migrants, meaning that they emigrated back to their country of birth. The other 40% are repeat migrants who left Israel in favor of a new country. Most return migrants originated in Western countries. Many repeat migrants come from Muslim countries to which they cannot return, and to some extent also from the former Soviet Union. A major concern about immigrants from Israel is the extent to which they maintain ties with the homeland. The longer they stay abroad, the less they attach to Israel. For example, 85% of Israelis who left between 1990 and 2000 indicated they were very attached to Israel as compared to 79% of those who immigrated in 1989 and earlier. Similarly, 92% of those who lived abroad for 10 years or less supported being familiar with the social and political situation in Israel. Only 70% of those who lived abroad longer reported this. When immigrants were asked whether they defined themselves as Israeli, 89% and 63% respectively answered yes. <coughs> Interestingly, as the immigrants' ties to Israel weaken, Jewish religion and ethnic identification gains strength. This is evident in the performance of key rituals and behaviors, such as keeping dietary laws, membership in a house of worship, and Jewish philanthropy. Hence, Israelis abroad do not assimilate into the host society. Instead, they integrate into the local Jewish community, namely a diaspora. The dynamic of Jewish migration has largely skipped the Far East. Such Jews who did settle in this part of the world arrived in different periods from Europe and as far as India is concerned, also from Iraq and some other Arab countries. The data in hand, which are not always of high quality, suggest that today there are approximately 10,000 Jews in Eastern and Southern Asia. About half of them reside in India, another one-fourth in China, one-tenth in Japan, and much smaller numbers in South Korea, the Philippines, Singapore, Taiwan, and Thailand. If we also take into account people of Jewish background, who presently do not regard themselves as Jewish, and the Jewish and non-Jewish family members of Jews, the enlarged Jewish population may rise to some 15,000. In Japan, Jews have settled quite late in the mid-19th century as part of the opening of the country to immigration from the West. At first, most of them came from China, where, as documents show, Jews had dwelt for nearly 2,000 years, even though the first written evidence of the presence dates from the 8th century. By the end of the 19th century, several dozen Jews had arrived in Japan, settling mainly in the vicinity of Yokohama, Kobe, and Nagasaki. After an earthquake in 1923 that hit Yokohama, among other places, the local Jews left for Kobe, where a Jewish community of some 1,000 people existed. During World War II, many Jews escaped from Europe to Far East, especially to China and Japan. 
When the conflict evolved into war between Japan and the United States, however, most of them either moved to China or immigrated to the United States. And has a permanent Jewish community of about 1,000 people, concentrated mainly in Tokyo and Kobe. Several hundred additional hundred additional Jews, or several thousand, according to some opinions, live in Japan for short periods, mainly for business purposes. Many of them are Israelis. In sum, it is clear today that the past 130 years were critical in Jewish geography. This period was characterized by massive migration of Jews and dramatic changes in the spatial dispersion. This period brought with it the Jews' reorganization in their independent state, Israel, on the one hand, and in democratic and most advanced countries in the diaspora, on the other. Under such circumstances, it may be argued that if business as usual prevails and no unforeseeable major political or economic crisis occurs, the Jewish international migration system has become quite stable. In the context of factors typically play a role in migration, <coughs> push factors at origin, and pull factors at the destination, Jews today have no good reason <coughs> to relocate. The large waves of Jewish migration are over, although some Jewish special mobility in today's global village and flat world is likely. Thank you very much for your attention.